Los amores de la costa son amores sin destino, camalotes de esperanza que se van llevando. cuarta vez que el monitor plástico viene a Venecia a realizar sus ciclos especiales con, cubriendo las distintas bienales de arte y nunca habíamos podido llegar a la PEI Guggenheim. Hoy tuvimos una entrevista con el director de la PEI, el mismo director desde hace más de 30 años y pudimos hacer un breve recorrido por las instalaciones de la colección, lo que ustedes van a ver en realidad es este, una recorrida rápida porque por un tema de derechos de autor las obras no se pueden filmar en detalle y con detenimiento. Pero quedamos sorprendidos por bueno, la, la riqueza de, de esta colección. Ya sabíamos que era una de las colecciones de arte moderno más importantes que hay en el mundo, pero ver juntas todas estas obras realmente impresiona bastante. Rita. Un poco invasiva. Exacto. Bene, perfecto, molto contenta. Sí. Non avete neanche il microfono, niente. No, niente. È buono. Perfetto. Ok, and your name is? It's the in Venice. Uh -huh. It's the third museum more visited uh -huh. after um, San Marco, uh -huh. which is of course you can consider it like a real museum. And um, Palazzo Ducale. Uh -huh. So, San Marco mm. and then Peggy. Professore, eccoci. Ah. Buongiorno. Macarena. Buongiorno, Buongiorno. Pincio Casanova. Tante grazie. 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 Oh, yes. mm, it's green, really green. It's a... Uh, or plastic one. Plastic. Oh. Oh. Here, if, uh, if you... It's okay for you. Um, sure. Okay. Whatever you like. If you want to see you. No, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Happy not to see me. Okay. Um, one of the great things about Venice is it's not just about. <laughs> Start again. Okay. One of the great things about Venice is, not, is that it's not just about ancient art, about the Renaissance and Titian and Tiepolo and so forth, 
but also about contemporary and modern art. And one of the great figures of this, in fact, the first really to introduce uh, great modern art to Venice was Peggy Guggenheim. She was an American, born in the Guggenheim family. Actually, her father, um, and this is celebrated, died on the Titanic. But Peggy was one of the great collectors of 20th century art and also had a position in the history of art when in the 1940s she discovered the talent of Jackson Pollock. One way or another she decided in the late 1940s to live in Venice. She brought her collection here and opened it as a museum. So what Venice can offer us is the collection, the museum of 20th century art of Peggy Guggenheim. She was a remarkable character. She had what was what somebody once called a, a caprice of iron. Uh, so she was, when she wanted to take on a project, she was really determined. Jackson Pollock benefited from this. Mm -hmm. She had great advisors around her, people like Marcel Duchamp or her second husband, Max Ernst. So he was less of an advisor and more of a husband. Uh, Nelly van Doesburg, the widow of the great Dutch mm -hmm. abstract painter and so on. So her collection was formed out of the milieu of the great classic avant-garde of European modern art and then from the 40s also her role in the development in, in the early works of the, of the American Abstract Expressionists. And that's the museum that you could see today in her house on the Grand Canal, totally unfinished, uh, begun in the 18th century. It's called Palazzo Venier, and, that's, and that today is where her museum is. She gave it in the 1960s to the Solomon R. Guggenheim Foundation. So when we think of the Guggenheim Foundation with its famous museum in New York by Frank Lloyd Wright as an international museum organization. That's also because, and perhaps in the first place, because in 1969 Peggy gave her house and her collection in Venice to, to the New York Foundation. Okay, thank you very much. You are a really great uh, speaker. <laughs> and, uh, uh, question is, uh, what's ha what do you think about the, what's happening with the artists if uh, Peggy have not uh, his great collection mm. today? It was once said about Peggy, especially with the relationship to Jackson Pollock, that if he, she hadn't existed, somebody else would have had to take her place as the person who for the first time had real faith and the capacity to promote uh, his art, but not only Pollock's art, that of other artists too in New York. Think of Robert Motherwell, who has a wonderful exhibition of his collages on right now at the Peggy Guggenheim collection, or of William Baziotis. Clifford still had his first exhibition from Peggy, and so on. So Peggy. The, the thing about Peggy as a collector, it wasn't just something she plucked out of auction houses. She lived it. She helped the artists. She knew them. Uh, and when they were completely unknown, she gave them the support they needed to have confidence to continue and the money to continue. Mm -hmm. This is a pattern in collecting which was taken up by another couple who collected from the 1950s onwards, certain Hannah-Laura and B. And, and, forgive me, yep. Hannah-Laura and Rudolf B. Schulhoff who decided uh, in recent years their collection should be donated to Peggy's museum to some extent in honor of Peggy herself. So as of this summer, uh, mm -hmm. here in 2013, uh, the Schulhoff collection of post-war American and European art is also on display here at the collection. Mm -hmm. And they too knew the artists and felt it their duty to, to support them. Okay. It's, uh, do you think that uh, is uh, sufficiently uh, recognized uh, the um, Peggy's collection for the contemporary art in the world? Peggy decided to leave New York in 1947 and come to Europe. And to some degree you might say that she left the Great Party, the birth of the New York School of Painters, uh, before it had really got going, certainly before it was over. And so to some extent in the 50s and 60s her role uh, was not recognized. It was thought that the first exhibition of Pollock in Europe took place in Paris in mm -hmm. 1952. That's not true. It, Peggy organized the exhibition of her collection of 23 Pollocks as early as 1950 here in Venice. But I think nowadays her role both as the great stimulus for creativity in the 1940s, the hinge between European and her European friends and her European collection and the new American school, uh, her role is now increasingly being recognized thanks to uh, the historians, the, mm -hmm. the books that are published, catalogues yeah. that are displayed, and perhaps to uh, our mission, which is to promote Peggy uh, and her collection mm -hmm. uh, from today and henceforth. Okay. Great. <laughs> Thank you very welcome. much. Okay. Thank you. Pleasure. And you're welcome Thanks for what if you're you for visit. Us.
like for me. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, here, just and you can. Do, in the meanwhile, you can shoot the. Online. Okay. are now on display uh -huh. and yeah that's it Because usually 
Yes. Exactly. And the closer was that. That camera, you want to see everything <laughs> yeah, <of> again. Course. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thank you. Max Ernst. Yeah, we have beautiful seats. Was the 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 of the 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 Here you can see how the height, the how you can see also that the seats are exactly the same as the circle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, now he has so many things to be shown. Education, even though it's not 
Anyway, ik heb het gemaakt. Ah, nou, ik ga het. Jij is in de Ja, ja. Oeh, doen. Weet je hoe ze die... Uh... Our artwork. There are few in the garden, like the little stuff. 